Hello, Norwood superstars. Let's get started with today's Norwood News Newsletter edition for Friday, December 17, 2021. This is for Norwood Elementary School, part of the Baltimore County Public School System. So a few things. Uh, first, you may notice it's Friday instead of Thursday. Normally, these newsletters are the first and third Thursday of every month. Just a little bit exception today. I'm Mr. Castro. I work at Norwood Elementary, and I was under the weather. So if you notice my voice is a little bit different, I apologize. I am still on the mend. But we just, for this week, because of when I was out, we decided to push it back just one more day to accommodate. Thank you all for your flexibility and patience. Now let's move on to some important upcoming dates. Tuesday, December 11th, we have our next Coffee and Conversation session, which we'll talk about in a moment. That'll be from 12 to 1 p.m. Thursday, December 23rd, all BCPS schools dismiss three hours early. There is no afternoon pre-K session. Norwood, in particular, dismisses at 12.20 p.m. That is the last day before students begin their break. So starting Friday, December 24th, all schools are closed from that point onward for winter break. And then on Monday, January 3rd, the schools reopen on a normal schedule. That's when they come back from break. And then Friday, January 21st, is our Makeup Picture Day. So we will also talk about that in a moment. Some important newsletter callbacks. You can just look at the dates and check these newsletters out and what they say here. Uh, the October 8th is just reminding you about the absentee note template and policies, both in English and Spanish. And then the 21st for October updates you about the emergency contacts and if you want to change or add someone to those to pick up your child. And then the, uh, November 4th, this is the last chance for your students in grades 3 through 8 to participate in the Americanism essay about how we can better support our veterans. So there are some prizes for that. So that would be something worth looking at if they have more time during the break. Um, I believe in January is when that wraps up. So first, talking about the makeup picture day. If you already participated in picture day, your student came, had their picture taken, and you ordered something, that is fine. You don't have to, you, you don't have to pay attention to this blurb right now. But for those who maybe missed it, your child was absent or something happened and you could not participate on picture day, well, this is what you want to pay attention to because the makeup day was scheduled for December 16th but has been pushed back to January 21st. So it gives them a little more time. Also, there's going to be new envelopes sent out and only those who did not participate or had a problem with their order or envelope and it was sent back need to pay attention to this. You will have a new envelope that will be sent home with a new picture ID. So you cannot use the picture ID from the previous envelope. I know that we had stated that you could. We received new information and there's going to be a new one sent out. So there will be a new picture day ID that's a new code if you're going to be using your credit card to make purchases online. And there's multiple ways you can make purchases online. I don't think you even need the student ID to do it. You have to just choose to use the picture ID uh, instead of the student ID. Um, but uh, we will have more information when we come back from winter break. We're going to give out new envelopes as we mentioned. And uh, if you ordered anything and intended to be there for picture day and then your student couldn't go, it'll just transfer over. Just like previously with the different rescheduling, uh, it'll transfer over to the makeup day. So no need to worry. You won't have to do anything or fill anything out. But like before, you're going to send in money with your child on the day of the makeup picture day and in the envelope. So for our next Coffee and Conversation session, our preview for December, it's going to take place on Tuesday, December 21st from 12 to 1 p.m. We're going to discuss all sorts of tips and strategies on how to promote better writing skills at home. And everyone who attends is going to get a writing kit for home use. And remember, these are, for now, continue to be virtual sessions that you can join via Google Meet using the meeting code Norwood Families. And for Google Meet, you're going to have, since your students are going to have their computers at school and you're going to be at home, you can either download the app on your mobile phone and then plug in your students' credentials that they would use for their computer to log in. Plug those credentials as the email. You want to switch to that email instead of using your email. Um, or uh, you can use a computer and just go to Google Meet and put in. Uh, make sure you log in as them. Change your account, your Google account, to your child's email. And, um, and there you go. There is a winter baseball camp for those of you who are wondering how to keep your children active during this changing weather. So on the cold months, it's a little harder to find things, but for $45 only, they could participate in the Great Charles Thrashers Baseball Winter Camp. Now, registration has actually been open since the beginning of the school year almost on September 17th, and it runs on Sundays from 12 to 2 p.m. starting from January 9th in the new year to February 27th. Uh, this is for students ages 3 to 15 years old, and they're going to be held at nearby Stricker Middle School. And please do not have your children wear cleats, just regular athletic shoes and sneakers. No cleats because this will be indoors. It's not on a field. 
uh, registered, simply send an email to this email right here. It's graycharlesthreshers2020 at gmail.com. Once again, that's graycharlesthreshers2020 at gmail.com. You can check out the flyer that we have the picture of here. And it just tells you exactly what's going on and what to, what to note. And it'll have the email listed in there as well. Just need to ask for more information when you send an email on how to register. And you need to provide a copy of your child's birth certificate, either digitally submit that or by the first game, take a copy in person. And if your child has never participated in one of these baseball camps previously, like in the spring or a previous winter, it's going to be a good time in the winter. Now, Vaccine options against COVID-19 for children ages 5 to 11. We actually have some vaccine options for adults too, but we've been receiving a lot of questions about if we knew about resources for vaccines for younger children since some have already been approved for younger ages. Um, now, there are several community-based options here, and these are not school-affiliated. So I just want to repeat, these are not school-mandated. They're not school-affiliated. They have nothing to do with Baltimore County Public Schools. You are going to do this based on your own voluntary volition, and um, nonetheless, it is not required for BCPS for you to do this. With that being said, we're going to talk a little bit about some initiatives that the Maryland Department of Health Vaccine uh, initiative GoVax is offering for families. Option one, there is a pop-up visor vaccine clinic on Saturday, December 18th, where you can pre-register or walk in. Now, if you do a walk-in, you may have a bit of a wait and it, there may not be availability based on if you just show up. But if you do pre-register, just click on the link for this flyer, which will be included um, in the description. And you click on the link and it's going to give you a QR code. So if you look here, this is the QR code. You've probably seen these when you go eat out. They have these on menus where you just, you know, take out your camera app on your phone and you focus on it. And then you'll start to see little corners appear in the edges. And then all of a sudden a link will pop up or a page will open. And you just follow through that and it'll give you an option to select the time. Uh, and pre-register. It's very straightforward and simple. You may have to enter some information so they know how to contact you if you haven't shown up. Um, but this is something new that they're trying out for this one day for Saturday, December 18th. Um, now, it's going to be held at the McDonald's parking lot on Wise Avenue. So the address is here, 7734 Wise Avenue, Dundalk, Maryland, 21222. That's actually very close by. Um, so uh, that's all you have to do. And if you can't, if your camera doesn't work, there are some phones where the cameras does not natively do this. You can just download a QR code scanning app. There's a lot of them out there and they're free and you just use that app instead of your camera app to scan the code and it'll open up similarly a page then that'll take you to what you need to do now that's for a pfizer papa clinic on saturday december 18th there are several others there's five more in addition to that date six total that are of the same variety here nearby at that same mcdonald's parking lot on wise avenue uh, but the difference is that these other five for Sunday, December 19th, Monday, December 27th, Tuesday, December 28th, Wednesday, December 29th, and Thursday, December 30th, they do not accept pre-registration. There's no QR code for you to scan. So you just have to walk in. And so earlier is better. It's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. for all of these, including for option one, the clinic on Saturday, December 18th. All of them run from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. here nearby at that McDonald's parking lot. So you can click here for a flyer for those other ones. And there's no school on the weekday ones because that happens during winter break. So that might be a good time for you to try and visit those if you are interested. And they also say that there's another McDonald's at 2222 Dundalk Avenue if you're seeking boosters um, for uh, children who are older that have been approved for 12 and up. Either first, second vaccines or booster doses, any vaccines for those older children that it's been approved for, you can go to that other location. Um, on those same exact dates. Now, there is a third option that is more for everyone, for children and adults. You can use the CDC Vaccine Finder tool. It's a website that allows you to look for vaccine and booster clinics that are the most convenient for you. So here's an example of what it looks like. You go here and it's already gonna have here where you can just put in your zip code. You can put your search radius of how much you want it to cover choose which of the vaccines you're interested in looking for. And you can also look for some key details from the vaccines and it'll just remind you of some certain key details. And then you can only choose to show locations that have appointments available. So if many of them have appointments taken up and they're not available, you can weed those out and just look at the ones that do. 
and then search. And then that way you can keep looking based on zip code, finding places that you might be willing to travel to if you're interested. So this is very, very useful. It's nationwide, but you can focus on our area or an area close to you. And there you go. That's how you find vaccines and boosters for any approved age. And they can be limited, but not, they can be located, but not limited to pharmacies mainly. Um, the CDC is focusing more on pharmacies like CVS's, Walgreens, Rite Aid's, and supermarkets and department stores that house pharmacies. So like maybe Walmart's or Target's may appear as well. Option four is a similar kind of tool, except it's Baltimore County government. So the Baltimore County government website, and if you click here, you're going to be taken to a page that actually is their vaccine hub. Now on a phone, a smartphone, this is going to look a lot more crowded and you're going to have to just continue to scroll down. But you scroll down to a part that says vaccine appointments for the week of and it'll tell you a particular week. This, this will update and change over time. So you just got to scroll down and find the dates that are most convenient to you. So you see its location, its time period, what type of vaccine is it that they're offering for what approved age range and what the address is of the location. And um, you're going to also see schedule appointments by clicking here. And then you click there and then you're going to just be taken to a page where you can and see, I clicked on one that already happened, so it's going to tell me that that clinic is closed. But if I try it again for one that's uh, much later in the date, here we go. We have some later dates now. I'm going to click here, and this will give me the option to just click on the dial next to a time that I want to actually sign up for. And it'll tell you how many appointments are available for any given time slot. So otherwise it'll say no appointments available and then you can save and continue and just continue that process. It'll probably ask for some information from you so that it knows who to reach out to if you don't make it or just to confirm and send you confirmation of your appointment. So it's really that simple. You have several tools here, some nearby, some on the web that you can use to find places that are close to you and convenient to you by time and scheduling appointments. All you can do this all on your phone. It works just as well. I'm just looking at it on a larger screen on a computer. So COVID-19 testing kits have been made available for free via, via various options. So some of the rapid tests, as you know, there's two types of tests. There's a the rapid test and then there's the PCR, which is the blood sample test that takes uh, like two days maybe to get a result from. That's a little bit more precise, but it may cost more or you may have to go through insurance. Rapid tests can be more readily available. And if they're done correctly, they're pretty accurate too. But they're giving them out to families. They now have rapid test kits that you can take and either purchase yourself or they're giving them away for free. So all the local Baltimore County health centers uh, that are available have them for pickup between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. as long as they're available. So if you go any given day close to 9 a.m., a little after uh, to any one of these health centers and you can click on this link, um, this is going to be the list of all the um, health centers, uh, the, the vaccine clinics. And you can also click on all the different, uh, find the free testing kits. A list of the county health centers here. So if you click, for example, on the one below where it says the county health centers, this is you just scroll down to see health centers and you can find all of these health centers. And if you're willing to drive or go to a different one, that may be an option for you. But I already singled out here which of the two that are closest to us. That's the Dundalk Health Center. And then there's the Eastern Family Resource Center, which some of you may be familiar with because these are places where you can get school vaccines to register your child and other school related that are health related requirements. So that's something that you can do for that. You can click there and then if they have them available, there's also the Baltimore County Public Library is going to be offering some. They've been giving some away. So the Baltimore County Public Library has made uh, testing kits available and they will post on their Twitter page. So you can follow them at, at BCPL info for when they announce those testing kit giveaways on particular days. You won't necessarily see it on the BCPL website. And also at any of the vaccine clinics that are sponsored at Baltimore County government. So that same link that we just went to that I showed you that has um, the vaccine appointments by date from Baltimore County. When you scroll down from the vaccine hub, any of these clinics at these times are going to have kits to give away. But as as you can expect, they're going to run out towards the end. So you should try to get there earlier if you really just want to be picking up a testing kit and it's free of charge and you can keep that home so you don't have to keep going somewhere to get your child tested if there happens to be more close contact cases or just out of precaution you want to test them whenever they get sick. Now here are the D December ELA unit reviews for families. These are the resources for reading and writing that we give every single month at the, the second newsletter of the month. 
enjoy these uh, you, these overviews. They, as always, they just provide a little bit of um, assurance and to help your child to meet expectation over what to expect when they cover a different topic or a new skill in reading or writing they're going to be going over and focusing on. So it's a good thing to read through together to just get them a little prepared. And we're going to include some things from the previous newsletter, like here's a short video that you can click on to watch on your own time about how to check for school closures and early dismissals. Because there's continues to be a lot of rumors and uncertainty over, is, is today a half day? I had several families ask me today if today was going to be a full day. And if you're ever in question, just go first to bcps.org, the website for the school, to see if there's any news bulletin posted. It will be posted there always if there is a change in schedule. But you can watch this video that tells you about the school calendar and where you can find it and how you can confirm for yourself so you don't even have to call the school or you don't have to ask anyone. You can know right off the bat if something is true or not when you are told something about a change in school schedule. Now, as always, missing jackets and items and lost and found. There are a lot of very nice and valuable looking jackets that we still haven't had picked up. These are just some of them. We've had even more added to them since then. So if your child has lost something of value, like a jacket, a piece of clothing, or, or maybe headphones, uh, as an adult, we have IDs, keychains. Uh, we have all sorts of valuable things to adults even that have left things when they just come by for a moment. So please check the school, call the school, ask the school. We can always run things by you. We have them in different locations, but we do have lost and founds for parents, adults, as well as for children. That is it for this edition of the newsletter. Thank you for your time and patience. And we are almost there, almost there. But the next bulletin is going to be when we come back in the new year. So have a fantastic, happy and happy holiday season and have a happy new year as well. Thank you all and keep on learning.